So I'm really excited. My name is Anna Pereira. I am the lead author in four of our books in the self-care series called The Wellness Universe Guide to Complete Self-Care. Our first book was 25 Tools for Stress Relief. Our second book was 25 Tools for Happiness. Our third book was 25 Tools to Achieve Anything. And I'm really super excited to be here today because I'm going to be reading my chapter um, from 25 Tools for Goddesses. Now, if the word goddess spooks you or triggers you in any way or you don't feel aligned with it, I just want to say to you, everyone is a goddess. Whether you identify as a he, a she, or a they, we all are made up of divine feminine and divine masculine energies. I was really compelled to write this book because, um, and, and the chapter I share with you a little bit of what I went through, um, because I had a hard time finding a self-identity, um, self-confidence, self-love, and also really taking ownership of the feminine side of myself to live in my best life and in my life's purpose. It was important to me to write this book and for this book to come out at the time it did because we are entering into the age of the divine feminine really claiming, um, claiming who you are and owning that piece of you, men and women. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for joining me. And, and as I was growing up, uh, I found it very hard. I always had to be um, from the masculine side. I always had to be very defensive of myself. I always had to be um, someone who, who, who stepped up in, in, a, in a more masculine way or in a and, and, and I'm not saying I wasn't a little girl. I was definitely a little girl when I was growing up and in, in, in my feminine in my femininity. But really lived from the masculine side, problem solving, defending myself, um, not, being, uh, not being nurtured had a lot to do with it. Um, I, I had to always be in this uh, self-defense um, place. I was bullied. So I'll be talking about that in my, in my uh, chapter, but I wanna let you know a few things that if you are live with me, and if you're watching this live, hi, Lolita. Um, uh, if you're watching this live and you want to share it out and you want to write shared during our live or even um, up until, I believe, 5 p.m. tonight, Vanessa, if you're still there, if you can copy the rules to the wonderful little um, contest I'm having, I'm going to be selecting some people to win a couple of prizes that if you share, just share this out and write shared in the comments and you'll be entered into the contest. Also, if you buy a paperback of this book today on Amazon by 12 p.m. midnight Pacific time, I'm going to gift you with a digital copy of any of the four books that I just shared with you. So um, with that said, I want to get into my chapter. Now, the name of the book, again, my name is Anna Pereira, and the name of the book is The Wellness Universe Guide to Complete Self-Care, 25 Tools for Goddesses. And along with some of these wonderful women that are in the room with me today, Debbie and Lolita, um, they actually are authors in this book. And what's really great about this book, I share, I share with you 24 other amazing, fabulous individuals who are here to step up and serve you to live in your highest and greatest good. This isn't just some book that you can't connect with the author and you'll read it and you'll feel like, oh, I'm just another reader of the book. No, you can connect with all of the people who give you their stories and their tools in this book. And I assure you, uh, man, woman, uh, however you identify, this book will change your life, okay? So I'm gonna introduce you first to the introduction of this book because it shares a little bit of what I mean when I'm talking about living in your unique goddess energy. Oh, my baby is here. Hi, honey. Hugo's here. He's here to hear me read. So, um, and pardon me, I am just getting over COVID, so in case I cough or I have a little bit of a dry throat, you know why. Um, so the introduction is, every woman is a goddess, each being a unique expression of the divine, Anna Pereira. Goddess energy comes from within. It is in your kindness, compassion, confidence, vulnerability, showing up and knowing your boundaries. It is in being a great friend and a loving human. It includes having courage and open heart, being adventurous, defining your values, being connected to your imagination and creativity, being free and open to your self-expression, being confident in your actions and inspiring others. Whether a team player or a standalone victor and always loving yourself through every challenge, fault or struggle and success, you are a goddess. You are a force, your heart guides you. Positive self-talk is the program that runs in your mind. It's about progress, not perfection. 
It's about telling yourself, I love you and you are doing great in believing it. It's showing up for those you love. This includes you at the top of the list. It's empowering, encouraging, embracing your sister goddesses, treasuring the moment, being fearless when you need to be, staying grounded under pressure, being vulnerable, asking for help and sharing your load, seeing situations for what they truly are and being discerning from an empowered core, moving through pain and rising from the ashes ablaze. Seeing situ, I'm sorry, moving through pain and rising for the, okay, I, you know what, I always, and Debbie, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, quote me on this. I do that twice every time I read this. And thanks for posting those, um, those uh, um, the, the uh, contest rules there, Vanessa. Thank you. So everyone check the contest rules. Oh, hi, Tina. Hi, Jennifer. Wow, I got so many friends with me. Thank you so much for joining me. So knowing you can do anything you put your heart, to, your heart, mind, and soul to, and even if you don't achieve your vision, you find success in the journey. Being kind, compassionate, and forgiving of yourself and others, knowing your boundaries and staying true to your beliefs, healing the wounds from your past and moving forward with grace, forging, forgiving, and feeling your way through it all nourishing your mind, body, and spirit, respecting nature, the earth, and the heavens for all the glorious and bountiful blessings you are gifted daily. Freedom, total freedom. It's not a superpower you achieve or a role you play. It's the essence you already are and always have been and that part of you that goes back to the stars once you journey back to source. You are a firework. You are a soft breeze. You are creation. You are unique goddess energy. Let us blissfully travel into this wonderland together. Let's live in it, in the here and now. Tap into your goddess energy with me through self-care and guidance, through storytelling and tools from my dear friends and wellness experts within these pages from the wellness universe. Allow this to be a joyous exploration into the parts of you you're ready to ignite. Fear not being the goddess you are. Life is constantly changing and creates new circumstances and challenges. When we recognize and have an awareness around self-care, we can better and more quickly uh, serve ourselves. Do not fear your greatness, goddess. Your goddess energy will guide you to joy and wonderful experiences beyond imagination of which you are so worthy of and all that you came to this earth for. I believe in you. Are you ready to own your goddess energy? Enjoy the journey of exploration, excavation, and implementation of wonderful tools and strategies and resources that will empower you, sweet goddess. Let the stories you read and the tools shared within this guide help you to make changes for yourself that allow you to experience your wholeness in your power. The world needs your greatness, inspiration, kindness, compassion, and courage, dear goddess. The universe wants you to be all you intended to be and experience life fully expressing your unique goddess energy. Thank you for picking up this book. Your best version of you is essential for peace and love to flourish and helps make the world a better place. So that's the introduction. And I hope that that frames what I mean when I'm talking about living in your unique goddess energy. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, Sharon. Please share this out while we're live, folks. This is great, and um, I hope many people will benefit from it. And also, please, authors who are with me, Tina and Debbie, and who else was with me, Lolita, please say hello and introduce yourself as one of the feature best-selling authors in this book, along with me, telling your story and giving your tools and guidance to live a better life. Oh, this is really exciting, guys. So with that said, I'm going to go into my chapter. This is the first time I've read my chapter to an audience live, so I may break down, fall into tears a little bit, because it is very um, <clears throat> very personal to me, this, sh this story that I share. Even when I wrote this, writing it out was the first time that I actually um, revisited this part of my life since it actually happened. So with that, let's begin. So I wrote the chapter, chapter one, Heart Reclamation, Using Visualization to Take Back Your Life. And I truly hope you hear my story and really try this tool. It's really great for anyone who's given away a piece of yourself to another human, a project, um, anything else that you feel like you've lost your heart, you've lost a piece of you. This is such a great practice. This is actually what unlocked the door for me to meet um, meet my husband because I don't I feel that if I didn't do this work on myself and it was so simple once I just said yes to myself that it really changed my life thank you Vanessa 
Thank you. Thank you. You like that? So I'm in Rio right now, by the way, and this is one of the towels that they sell on the beach to lay on the beach with, and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous, so I, I purchased it to be my backdrop today. Okay, here we go. If you let this one get away, you'll be alone forever. The scene, just like watching a movie and hearing the echo forever, 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 as the camera zooms in frame by frame, the look of horror on my face. Is he right? Will I really be alone forever? Is Jay the best thing that ever entered into my life? Am I such a terrible person? Not compatible, hard to get along with, standards too high, undeserving of love, worthless, get away. Must I imprison someone to be loved? Why would my dad say that to me? Oh, the thoughts that went through my head. I felt dizzy and nauseous as if I was going Off. My dad had his own issues and he was projecting them again. We were so much in love. He was a great guy, funny, charming, a great circle of friends, social, stable career in IT for a global company and easy on the eyes. A great love of my life. And the chemistry? I chihuahua. I gave Jay my entire heart, body, and soul. Growing up unworthy. Riding bikes, playing with Barbies, kickball in the street, going to the park, exploring nature, digging in the dirt, salamander hunting, coloring contests, going to the beach, swimming in the pool, cartwheels on the front yard, and a special trip to DQ for my favorite hot fudge brownie Sunday. This was my childhood. Also, bullying, blame, shame, teasing, belittling, and ostracizing. This is tough, guys. And of course, I don't have any tissues with me here. <laughs> okay. Anna's corroded. Anna's corroded. The neighborhood bully taunted me as I was picked on. I was picked the last for teams. I was blamed for literally anything that went wrong, anytime, anywhere. I'm tearing up as I write this and as I read this. Revisiting the, these painful childhood memories and the heartless cruelties of children and the way they mock an adult who had no compassion. As I sit here now, I'm thinking corroded. Who the hell even uses that word, let alone a child? What a strange word, corroded. It indeed is a terrible word to be called. The definition from Merriam-Webster, corrode, corrode, corroded, corroding. Definition of corrode. Transitive verb, number one, to eat away by, degre by degrees as if gnawing, especially to wear away, away gradually, usually by chemical action, the metal was corroded beyond repair. Number two, to weaken or destroy gradually, undermine, manners and miser miserliness that corrode the human spirit, Bernard DeVoto. And of course, something that is corroded is crusty, rusted, calcified, and has some sort of hideous layer that typically makes something appear to be useless or trash worthy. I still get emotional and can remember how hard it was growing up being me. My unruly, curly, frizzy hair, nappy, frizzy head, afro, I heard them all. The only solution was to cut it short. Then. I was called a boy. There was no winning at the game of confidence, self-love, and self-worth. I had no coach, no team, no fans. Getting back to the moment, my dad shared his advice with me. I was so in love with Jay, but he was not for me. He was medically diagnosed with a mental disorder that, I, that had him on medication. He was previously married to a woman for less than a year after dating her for 10. This was a clue that he had commitment issues. We lived together. It was a short relationship, but I was head over heels and gave him all of my heart. I can't do this anymore. As I opened my eyes and rolled over that morning, those were his words. What? I can't do this anymore. Do what? I don't want to be here. I'm leaving. At first, I thought he was having an episode, like when he complained about his credit card bills. Then he went out to the mall and returned with three new pairs of shoes, and every pair was brown just because okay then reality set in he really is leaving as he gathered his things i was in a i was in complete crazy girlfriend mode don't leave i love you you can't leave why are you leaving there were tears and screaming and falling to the floor in a heap then the anger 
go. Take all of the lights down. There's no Christmas this year. You destroyed my Christmas. I can't believe you. Are you sure you want to do this? There was the desperation of a situation out of control and the ripping to shreds of my heart. I stood in the middle of the room feeling like I was falling into an abyss of surrealism. I darted through the house chasing him, hysterical, begging, pleading, negotiating. Later, his friends showed up in the dark, making no haste. They cut the thousands of white, light, white blinking lights off of the bushes and hauled his stuff away. V, Jay's friend, removed his life items and every trace of Jay from our home. Oh my God, he can't wait to get out of here and out of my life, I thought. I watched as if, as if they executed a plan that had been in the works for some time now. They went with arms full in and out like they were loading as many items into the escape vehicle as possible before the volcano erupted and lava engulfed the house. V shot me a compassionate glance of pity as if to say, I'm so sorry, Anna, this is just how it is. He was gone. My life was in pieces. I was a pile on the floor. The lava arrived and I was left to burn. I spent days and days in tears, torture and pain, cursing him, God, and everything. And the words of my dad echoed in my head, you will be alone forever. I spun deeper and deeper into depression. Night after night, I felt like my heart was being ripped out and shredded. Emotional and physical pain twisted my insides and made me feel like I was bleeding out. I howled in grief. I had feelings of not wanting to live, asking God to just let me die. I, it went on until I thought I had no more tears, pleading, negotiating, or begging inside of me until I had no more anything left. Then I found more tears, screaming, cursing, howling, begging, bargaining with God to make the pain go away. I was all alone through it all. My best friend in the world, Jeannie, was my rock. She listened and supported and did all the best friend could do. I talked, screamed, cried, and tried to hold it together, but kept falling apart for months. I was desperate. I remained friends with his mom and dad. They loved me. I did all I could to grasp any thread that would give me hope of his return, but he never did. Jay was gone forever. Thank you, God, for knowing best. <laughs> Dear reader, if you've read the introduction to the Wellness Universe Guide to Complete Self-Care, 25 Tools for Happiness, the, the yellow book I, I held up before, my second book, I shared how I manifested my beloved of allow, now 11 years, actually 12 since this book was published. Before I could manifest anything, there was something I needed to do, take back my heart. This awareness came after a conversation with a good friend of mine, Josh. He gave me some great rituals for, for cleansing and bathing with intention infused sea salts and baking soda to cleanse my energy and bring, bring positive things back into my life. You have given your heart away that's what we do when we love someone. You must take it back. And with that, he gave me a ritual that changed my life. I will share the tool with you later. The gravity of this awareness hit me like a spear in my chest. Maybe I had been walking around all of this time without owning my heart. When do I last remember loving myself with total ownership of me? Clearly the fear of being alone and loved and unattached was, was the window to that epiphany. Single forever? I'd rather be dead, I thought. It's all clear now, of course. The lack of nurturing in my home, the neighborhood bu bullying, the growing up awkward were all the perfect, ingredient were all the perfect ingredients to create a shitstorm of a life for myself. We were all in the ladies' room, lip glossing it up and pumping rave hairspray into our guidette styles as high as possible. Remember those days? I remember being so uncomfortable with who I was that I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror to fix my hair when hanging out with my girlfriends. I felt so ugly, embarrassed, and ashamed of my appearance. Thinking about this makes me sad. What a poor, broken girl I was. How can someone so ugly be loved? This is what went through my mind constantly. This is the foundation for wrapping myself up in the validation of someone else. This is the foundation for seeking approval. This is the foundation for bad decisions, being manipulated and being taken advantage of. Now I call myself the head goddess of the wellness universe and my community and organiz organization have gathered souls from around the world who make the world a better place. 
if you know me because of this, you probably cannot fathom reading or hearing what I just shared. For you may know me to be a confident, entrepreneurial, fairy tale, lifestyle living, happy, blessed woman who lives globally and has a generous heart, often being called too kind. The tool I share with you, I often share with anyone I come across who I feel may need it. This visualization is not just for getting over romantic breakups, it's for loss. When you give yourself to a person, project, or commitment that ends, sometimes your heart goes with it. Your emotional investment is stronger than any other resource you can put into something. You can make money back, you can get a new career, you can find a new partner, but your heart, you only have one. My heart is the source and connection to my goddess energy. To be a goddess is to have radiating, love-filled, wholly owned, a wholly owned full heart. It is to be kind, compassionate, confident, empathetic, courageous, and creative. Being a good wife, friend, and leader requires my heart and love energy to be rooted in me. So, uh, do I have any comments uh, that you'd like to share yet? Have you been enjoying the chapter so far? I'm about to share the tool with you. But with a swig of water first. Yes, you were, Jennifer. Yes, you were. Thank you. Unbelievable, right? <clears throat> okay, so, um, and believe me, uh, I have a couple of wonderful gifts. Thank you, Tina. I have some wonderful gifts for you. Uh, for, we have a contest. If you share this out by 5 p.m. today, East Coast time, uh, somebody's going to win all four copies of each of the books signed by me. And there are a couple of winners of this book being signed by me. And also, if you buy a copy of this book today, you can get a free digital copy of one of the other books. And Vanessa will post that information again. Thank you, Vanessa. Vanessa said she's in tears. Um, <clears throat> So here is the tool. Now, I just shared this incredible story with you, right? Um, but have no fear. I'm here. I've arrived, right? I'm 48. I'm doing great. I have the life of my dreams, but how did I get here? And I, I completely, completely believe that this tool literally had to be done. I had to do this in order for my life to change its trajectory. So please listen up, pay attention. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Sharon. This tool is really strong. It literally is the difference between taking a drink of water when you're thirsty or um, being parched and not drinking. This tool changed my life. So here we go, and it's so simple. The tool, in preparation for this visualization, takes about 20 to 40 minutes for your first time, especially if you're not used to meditating or really sinking into that place. Emotionally, be ready to let go and purge. Mentally, say goodbye. Physically, be in a safe space that you consider your sanctuary. Are you ready? You will need, and this is an order of importance, a quiet space, no distractions. This deep healing and life-shifting visualization requires your total focus and giving over to it. A dark space. The energy of my bedroom worked best for me. It is the place in the house that my sanctuary, that is my, my place, my sanctuary, and is my energy. Conscious, subconscious, and unconscious live there. If you're traveling or away from your personal habitat, try to vibe with owning your energy wherever you happen to be. A candle to help you focus. Setting your gaze on a flame helps to slip into the meditative state. Let's begin. I will share exactly what I did and you are free to adapt to any version that resonates. Above all else, be gentle, be truthful with releasing and purging all emotions connected with the loss. I sat cross-legged in my bed. The lights were off, only silence, that candle, and my emotions were in the room. I inhaled and exhaled as I fixed my glance on the candle. I, re I recollected all of the emotional connections to the person, place, or thing, in this case, Jay, and let the tears flow. I did not judge. I was saying goodbye. Let the tears flow. Say your goodbyes. Goodbye is a great place to start. It, it gives you finalization. You are in control of the final goodbye here. It can be a see you later if this is a physical loss of a loved one or a pet, etc. Once I felt enough physical purging of tears, I closed my eyes. I visualized a crystal clear heart with an aurora borealis rainbow coating floating above my head. 
it began to spin slowly. I imagined putting words into that heart and with each word, the heart began to glow. Worthy, I love me, best friend, confident, trusting, grateful, forgiven. All of the words I believe about myself and the words I wanted to own. With each positive word and heart filled, the heart filled with light. It spins and spins and shines, glowing brighter and brighter, spinning faster and faster. Glowing and radiating beams of white and golden light filled the room and filling me with a sense of readiness. Once I have filled this floating heart with all of the significant and kind words that stream through my mind and body, as if they are downloading as knowings and meetings, and I finally feel complete, I physically reach up and grasp this heart gently, securing it with all of my love, putting it, pulling it down and placing it into my chest. So I'm going to stop for one moment just to show you literally the physical pieces that you do within this tool are just as important as what you're verbalizing, what you're thinking and what you're feeling. I physically reached up and I grasped that heart and I brought it down to my chest and I put it inside my chest and I held it there and I held it there and I held it there until I knew I owned it again. I sat with hands over my heart I felt it, it's back inside of me, beating, thanking me for being home again, ready to serve me and to receive my respect, honor, and gratitude. When I felt full and complete, I opened my eyes and I blew out my candle. The visualization was something that I needed and I'm so grateful for having learned this tool. It course corrected me, it sutured my wounds, it healed me. May your heart be within you with love, peace, courage, joy, compassion, and giving you all that you need to be your empowered goddess, to, to be in your empowered goddess energy as you journey through life. May you be a beacon of inspiration and love for others. May you own your truest version of your unique goddess energy that empowers you to live your best life. Blessings, Anna. So again, that was chapter number one, my chapter from the Wellness Universe Guide to Complete Self-Care, 25 Tools for, for Goddesses. And it's available on Amazon. And I just want to share with you the other amazing authors. We have a wonderful forward to the book. We also have some shared experiences from some other wonderful women who are inspirational, influential, and um, situated around the globe who shared what really... Um, what it really means to live in their unique goddess energy. And it's fun actually posing this question. What does it mean to you to live in your unique goddess energy? Why don't you just take a moment and journal about that today? See how you feel. See where you may be broken a little bit. See where you may need a little more healing with that. See where you really feel empowered. Maybe even shockingly or surprisingly to yourself, you feel like you've done the work. You really feel embodied in that unique goddess energy. It's a beautiful feeling. So, um, so I have a couple of comments. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Lolita. Uh, you're welcome.